know your his code provisions short lecture series so in this lecture i will explain about design vertical earthquake effects so generally earthquake will have three components that means building will vibrate in three uh, directions three mutually perpendicular directions two horizontal directions and one vertical directions so generally horizontal ground motion dominates vertical ground motion but in some cases vertical ground motion dominates or vertical component will dominate so under what cases this vertical uh, component will dominate so first of all uh, this is uh, this is the case where uh, which occurs in the near fault regions so sometimes in near fault regions vertical component will dominate and also vertical component will also become important for long structures like dams embankments like that so in this lecture we will look into those details so let me share my screen <coughs> yeah design vertical earthquake effects clause number 6.3.3 effects due to vertical earthquake shaking shall be considered for two reasons one is for stability another one is for safety so stability of what stability of structures like embankments bridges and dams so because these are long um, structures and also for safety of buildings embankment bridges and dams or their components including the following what are the components uh, what, what are the uh, other things when this vertical ground motion is considered number one when structure is located in seismic zone 4 and 5 so that means when structure is building is located in seismic zone 4 and 5 we need to consider vertical ground effect of vertical ground motion vertical component second is when structure has irregularities so plan irregularities as well as elevation irregularities or vertical irregularities in third case that is when structure is resting on soft soil you need to consider vertical component also vertical ground motion <coughs> and next structure with long spans which cause amplification of oscillations due to their flexibility so when long spans are there so vertical component that is when the building vibrates or when uh, structure vibrates up and down then it might cause uh, large deformations so in such case vertical vertical ground motion or vertical component need to be considered then structure has large overhangs of structural members or subsystems so that means if the structure has say, a component which are projecting out from the building then this vertical ground motions or vertical component will become critical and also this pre-stressed uh, structures so in pre-stressed uh, structures also because they have uh, uh, lesser uh, member dimensions and long spans so this pre-stressed uh, elements also or structures with pre-stressed elements also need to be considered of what the vertical component need to be considered in that the next uh, structures with pre-stressed members pre-stressed structures and pre-stressed members so in this so these are the seven uh, cases in which vertical components uh, have to be considered now how to estimate this uh, design vertical earthquake force or the load so what code says is that is when effects due to vertical earthquake shaking are to be considered the design vertical force shall be calculated for vertical ground motion as detailed in clause number 6.4.6 6. so that is this so this is given for all types of uh, uh, structures that is one is for building second one is say liquid retaining tanks uh, bridges and industrial structures so what essentially it means is you can see here this is z by 2 r by a that is i by r <coughs> into sabg value is taken as maximum so what it is showing is the two-third of horizontal component so two-third of acceleration coefficient horizontal acceleration coefficient is taken as acceleration coefficient for vertical uh, component so that's what in all two-third you can see here two-third 2 by 3, 2 by 3, 2 by 3, all cases 2 by 3. So, two third of horizontal component is considered as vertical component. 
Now, once we calculate this uh, earthquake load E L that is in uh, like vertical direction, that is a Z direction, X and X direction, Y X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. In Z direction, so how do we account this in the design? So where both horizontal and vertical seismic forces are taken into account, load combination specified in 6.3.4 shall be considered. So what is that load combination? That is simple. That is full earthquake load of one direction plus 30% of earthquake load in other two directions. That means in one direction, the assumption is in one direction when the full earthquake force is acting simultaneously, that up to 30% of the force may act in the other two directions. That is the assumption. So if such is the case, then how the uh, like forces that is EQX, EQY and EQZ are computed. So EQX is computed or replaced with EQX plus or minus 30% of EQY and plus or minus 30% of EQZ. Similarly, EQY that is Y direction component that is EQY 30% of uh, EQZ plus 30% of EQX. And then similarly in Z direction, EQZ, that is 100% of force in EQZ and then 30% of uh, force earthquake force in EQ, uh, uh, X direction as well as Y direction. So these values, that is this total combination has to be replaced by, I mean this EQZ has to be replaced by this one. So one full earthquake load in one direction plus 30% combination, 30% in other two directions. So the intention of this short lecture is to help students and practicing engineers to understand high score provisions in a better manner. Following references have been used in the preparation of these slides. Thank you.